Hey VC, how's it going? Uh, I figured I might as well, before it gets any larger, just go ahead and show all of my music related, uh, like movies slash like any kind of DVD about music, excluding like musicals for the most part. Uh, I have, I think I have one or two musicals in there in that pile that uh, couldn't really not show. There's a few that I left out. Um, and all the music related books that I have. So, uh, the thing, this week I didn't really get any records, but I did get a, uh, a couple books, but only one of them being music related. Uh, so I got this book called Outside the Lines. It's just kind of uh, alternate uh, photographs and artwork from the art of lots of famous punk and new wave stuff. So like the Ramones first album, uh, Blondie's in here for two albums, B-52's. Uh, but there's some alternate photos from the Parallel Lines album. Uh, Iggy Pop's in here, The Damned are in here, Nina Hagen, uh, The Jam, Elvis Costello. Bowie's in here, He's uh, they show some photos from Heroes, uh, alternate versions of the Heroes uh, famous photo. And uh, I think they also show Lodger in here as well. But yeah, a pretty cool book. Uh, I got this for like four bucks. These are cool alternates from the uh, Echo and the Bunnymen, uh, what's the album called? Crocodile? Yeah, Crocodiles. So four bucks, this is the new book I got this week. It's hardcover, uh, pretty nice. Um, I'll, I guess I might as well show the rest of the books. Uh, this is an interesting kind of collection of it's mostly it's like 99% photos of, of just 45 rpm singles um, and mostly just kind of the artwork from like picture sleeves like it goes kind of chronologically so it, it kind of goes into the it starts with the early days of the format showing like EPs um, that kind of thing lots of Sinatra shown in here um, Kind of cool. I think that was uh, Chet Baker. Yeah, Chet Baker's there. Oh, and there's uh, Ellen and Louie. And of course, it goes into like Elvis, Roy Orbison, getting into the you know the pop stuff. Beatles on Walrus, Rolling Stones. Just lots of photos of uh, picture sleeves, basically. Uh, he gets kind of into some punk stuff as well. And uh, it just kind of goes up until the 90s, at which point I don't recognize like any of the, uh, any of the, the artwork or any of the bands or anything, but you know, they were really the only people making seven inches on a, on a normal basis were kind of punk and hardcore bands. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Next up, Neil Young's autobiography, Waging Heavy Peace. Uh, this has like a subtitle of like a hippie dream or something like that. Oh, it's in his it's in his hat there, hippie dream. But uh, this uh, this book is is, is interesting. He it, it kind of it has like a stream of consciousness uh, kind of feel to it. You know, he's obviously not like a like a typical writer he obviously is a great songwriter but um this book flows kind of interestingly it's not necessarily chronological he just kind of goes from subject to subject just kind of honestly kind of rambling about stuff but if you're a big neil fan then uh you you would definitely enjoy this book so you can get copies used pretty cheaply uh the same goes for pretty much all of these books i don't really have anything rare and or that new if it is kind of new then at this point um you can find it at like a discount bookstore uh for a good price like a lot i did for a lot of these uh next up 24 hour party people by tony wilson this is the guy who founded uh factory records famous for uh having like joy division and the beach or i almost said the beach Boys for some reason joy division and, and the new or and new order uh there's some photos in the middle there's not really much to show with books. This was funny. You can kind of show the cover. If it's got any pictures, you can show those. But other than that, it's like 
that's in the show, just gotta talk about it. So, this book isn't really as good as you would, you would think it would be, considering the subject matter. Uh, his perspective on things is, is, is kind of, uh, kind of interesting. I would like to hear more from musicians rather than people on the business side of things, but, um, now it, some of the interest, the, the stories in here are interesting and regardless. Um, he goes into obviously the bands he signs and the, the, the whole disaster of the <laughs> Hacienda nightclub, uh, that was kind of the downfall of the label. So, uh, moving on, Brian Wilson's autobiography. He didn't write this all himself. Uh, he credits Ben Greenman with helping him, which I feel like was mostly just him kind of talking and Ben just kind of writing things down, but, um, and editing. But, um, this is probably one of my other favorite music related books that I own or that I'll show right now. Um, I talk about this a lot. I reference this a lot in my videos. Um, this combined with a movie that I'll show in a little bit called Love and Mercy um, paints a pretty good picture of, of the guy. If you want just like the crash course of the story, then just watch the movie Love and Mercy. I would highly recommend it. And uh, the book, if you like the Beach Boys, definitely read this. If you haven't read it yet and you love the Beach Boys, what are you doing? Read this book, listen to the audiobook, whatever you can do. Um, it's it's just a, a cool perspective on on this guy's um, really struggle with uh, his own mental instability and, and substance abuse problems um, and his battle with kind of uh, a shady uh, doctor. But uh, I highly recommend that one. This book, uh, more of a novel type thing, uh, memoir, Old Records Never Die, written by uh, Eric, S Eric Spitznagel. Spitznagel? Um, the, the concept behind this is really cool. It's um, a guy, you know, grew up with records, like many of you did. Um, he, he sold them all, gave them all away, whatever. And, um, and now, decades later, after the fact, as vinyl has already gotten popular again, he wants to go back and find all his old records. Not just the same records that he owned, but like literally his old records. Like he, he would know, like he wrote his name on them or he wrote like the phone number of a girl or, or anything like that. He, he is pretty, um, fanatical with, in particular, he was, he really wanted his copy of Let It Be the re, by the replacements back. And, uh, he bought several copies just like going through them and he, he would listen to them and, and he could kind of tell whether or not they were, uh, his actual records based on, uh, skips that his, his old records used to have. And it's, it's a kind of interesting journey. Uh, that book's, that book's pretty, pretty funny as well. He's kind of a, a funny writer. Uh, this one was actually probably one of these that I've owned the longest. This is, uh, the 100 Best Beatles Songs by, uh, Stephen J. Spigesi and Michael Lewis. Uh, sorry, I just butchered that name. You can see it there. Um, this was a gift from my parents when I was kind of going through my Beatles obsession. They just kind of, they have a hundred of their songs in here as they kind of uh, try to rank them in, in some kind of order. Um, I agree with them probably like 40% of this. Obviously, you know, it's the top 20 is kind of the same for everybody for the most part. Um, they don't really get too adventurous with that, but as it gets lower and lower into the list, like, you know, numbers, um, probably like 75 through 100 is where they had to make some tougher cuts um, with their opinion on what their best songs are. So this is an interesting book for, for Beatles fans. Not only do they um, rank them, but there's a lot of info in here about, um, like, just kind of trivia, um, studio process, and um, fun facts, things like that. 
credits, um, actual detailed, uh, detailed uh, notes about the recording sessions themselves, like dates, and uh, obviously musicians on the on the recordings. This is another memoir. It's called Love Is a Mixtape. It's by Rob Sheffield, who's one of my favorite current music related authors. Uh, he writes a lot for Rolling Stone and um, I think he's I think he's one of their editors as well but um, he he kind of looks back at his his life and his previous uh, previous marriage through the mixtapes that they would kind of make for each other and at the beginning of each chapter opens with uh, just just a tape track listing from actual tapes that he he still has and there's like a lot of memories in here his his memories being um happy sad old and new um just really like this guy's writing had to get his memoir i don't have any of his other books physically but uh, i've heard many of them on, on audiobook he wrote a, a great um book recently about the beatles called dreaming the beatles kind of um it, I wouldn't recommend it for people who don't know that much about the Beatles, but for fans, he kind of writes from a, a perspective of assuming that you know a lot about the Beatles already. So he, he kind of skips all that and just immediately goes in depth about um, just kind of uh, the, their story and their impact. And it doesn't just end, you know, with it doesn't end whenever they broke up or, or at some point in the middle of their solo careers. It ends at present day with their um their their entire catalog as it stands and um the impact that they still have on new generations in uh, in 2017. so i haven't read this one yet this is god save the kinks by uh rob jo jovanovic uh hardcover got this pretty cheap um i haven't read it yet so again i can't speak too much about it from what I know about the Davies Brothers story and the kind of the band's struggle with um first of all trying to trying to come up with a hit song succeeding and then um like the record labels kind of taking advantage of them uh it's just an interesting story that I think a lot of uh, a lot of acts can relate to this I wouldn't necessarily count this as a biography by any means. It's it's more of just like an anthology of uh, Bob Dylan interviews called Dylan on Dylan. It goes chronologically. Um, this thing is packed with with text. It's like four. It's over four hundred pages of just interviews with all kinds of publications and um, and media media outlets. He has like there's like six different Rolling Stone interviews in here. There's like two or three with Playboy magazine. Uh, going going through the years, you know, starting from like the early '60s all the way through, uh, I think like 2004. Yeah, so '62 to 2004. Um, there's probably like 20, 25 interviews in here, and they're not all about necessarily his music. It's, it kind of gets into his, you know, his personal life, and um, uh, obviously he talks a great deal about his his songwriting process and and lyric writing process. It's kind of fascinating. To, to hear his own perspective on his own work, you know, from the man himself. Uh, this one was a gift to me from my parents. I think they got this, maybe, at, like, I don't know where they went, but they got this for me somewhere. Uh, it's just called The Record Store Book. It's kind of, um, it's just going over stores, record stores in the Los Angeles or Southern California area. Some of them famous, like Amoeba, Amoeba Hollywood's in here. Some of them are really tiny. Some of them are already out of business. Some of some new ones that have become really popular aren't even in here yet. Um, I don't know what year this came out. It was recent. Uh, 2015. So kind of a, a new book about some records some record stores in California that are currently in business right now 
I haven't been to California uh, in, I've only been there once and I was not into records at the time. So if I go back, I'll definitely have to kind of use that as a little bit of a reference. Uh, these last three are, you know, the giant kind of coffee table book style things. This is, this, this is called Punk or the Best of Punk magazine. Um, really cool perspective on some people that were just kind of in the middle of the whole CBGB New York punk uh, scene and um, they there's lots of great comics in here screenshots of, of not screenshots but like uh, photocopy pages from the actual magazine it was all handmade you know DIY uh, they show the covers, show everything. Um, comics, like I said, tons of photos, interviews, articles, reviews, pretty much everything you can want uh, as like a, a collection from a famous magazine. Really cool. I've shown this before in one of my first videos when I just got it. This is uh, Psychedelia. Uh, 101 iconic underground rock albums 66 through 70 by Richard Morton Jack pretty cool collection of, of music uh, just kind of short write-ups about the music on on all these albums um, how, how they're significant to the psychedelic scene or or sound um, Really cool. Lots of stuff I've never heard of before. Stuff I see sometimes, uh, like, you know, on, on walls of record stores. Really cool. And this is, I got this for like three or four bucks. This is uh, 360 Sound, the Columbia Records story. This is just the history of, of the label Columbia, starting from the phonograph era, Edison Records, through uh, 78s into vinyl records and actually into the CD era as well. Um, kind of interesting. It's not the best written book, but again, as like a coffee table style book, it is pretty nice, you know, nice quality photographs in here. Like there's a uh, Los Costello. There's a uh, good photo of uh, Dylan in here, I can find. There's also some great photos of Miles Davis, uh, Barbara Streisand, pretty much everyone that was on this giant of a label, which I think Columbia might be owned by Sony now. That sounds right. Um, yeah, pretty interesting book. Obviously, the, the cover drew my eye with all the all the labels. All right, that's all the books I got. Um, I'll try to go through movies pretty quickly because I'm sure there's nothing too crazy in here. I'm sure a lot of you have already seen these. But um, The Last Waltz by the band, pretty great concert. Uh, if I remember a moment from here right, Neil Young kind of creeping out, uh, Joni Mitchell on stage, really weird. Um, Walk the Line, the Johnny Cash uh, biopic or biopic, however you pronounce that. Um, Joaquin Phoenix actually does a really good job of playing Johnny Cash. This is one of those I wasn't sure whether or not to include, but I figured it's heavily focused on music, so I might as well. This is Whiplash, pretty recent movie um, about this. It's a fictional story about this this kid in, uh, in music school. He wants to be a jazz drummer, and his insane teacher. Um, the Sound of Music, uh, classic musical, probably one of my favorite movies. Um, Love and Mercy. This is the Brian Wilson biopic I mentioned earlier. Um, go see this movie, seek it out, highly recommended. Into uh, DVDs, got The Beatles' Help, uh, I would like to own Hard Day's Night as well as this. This one's actually really funny, like, um, people, I don't know if people recognize this as, as kind of a, a good movie or not, but I, I found it entertaining at least. Um, classic, this is Spinal Tap, um, pretty great, uh, parody or, or, uh, just in general comedy movie centered around a fictional band turned real band, uh, ironically enough, called Spinal Tap. Uh, this is Pink Floyd's The Wall, kind of infamous movie, 
that may or may not have uh, helped contribute to their breakup. Just the stress of making a movie in general. Uh, this is a Bjork uh, collection of music videos called uh, Vol Volumen. Uh, I don't remember the videos that are on here. There's like uh, So So Quiet, Army of Me, Big Time Sensuality. It, it just kind of goes through her early career ending at about, um, let me see, kind of the, um, uh, what's that album called? The Homogenic Era. Um, Talking Heads, Stop Making Sense. Great live show. Um, I'm not sure if this is actually from multiple concerts, but either way, it's, it's arranged into like a full length uh feature not it's just it's just pure music you know there's no interviews or, or really speaking it's just uh you know them playing great music and he it is kind of famous for the big suit that david Byrne wears uh it's it's way too large for him and that's intentional uh favorite among the vc this is high fidelity um i say favorite but it's also kind of div the divisive i guess is the term um, you know, just, it's, it's interesting movie, kind of an interesting perspective on the state of, uh, record stores, at least in, like, the late 90s, early 2000s, um, when it was definitely more of a niche thing. This is another one I wasn't sure whether or not to throw in here, but I figured I might as well, this is Across the Universe, just a, uh, a musical movie based on Beatles catalog, uh, Almost Famous, this is partially true story about Cameron Crowe's uh, kind of coming of age, beginning to write for Rolling Stone. Um, again, kind of an interesting movie. Uh, it's, uh, it also kind of follows this fictional band called um, Stillwater, I think their name is. Uh, either way, it's kind of it's kind of based on Cameron Crowe's own life, kind of not. Um, and I... I kind of respect Cameron Crowe. I haven't seen all his movies. Again, he's kind of a divisive filmmaker. I kind of enjoy Vanilla Sky, even though I can definitely see why people would not like that movie. Um, Blues Brothers, I would consider this a, a musical movie. I mean, uh, you know, the Blues Brothers themselves are a musical act, that is their thing. They play both kinds of music, country and western. <laughs> And, uh, just freaking hilarious movie. Um, next up, or I guess last, uh, this Radiohead self-made kind of documentary. Or not self-made, they had, uh, Grant G, or Grant Gee, however you pronounce that. He just kind of followed them around on their, uh, the later part of the tour for the Benz. And kind of the recording process for OK Computer. Kind of a gray era for the for the band as a whole just kind of a it also goes a little bit into the the early stages of the making of kid a there you can you see on the, in this film you can see a early version of, of nude being played in a in a rehearsal space somewhere it's really cool and i have the same thing on vhs as well because why not it was only 50 cents sorry i just got to pop up on my screen about my battery so um yeah vhs only 50 cents uh kind of interesting sticker on the tape with the the always creepy kind of stanley donwood radiohead artwork um yeah that's that's it that's all the the stuff i have music related that's not you know a record or, or a cd or a tape and um if I get more, I'll show them in my, my recent finds videos, but I just kind of wanted to get that out of the way of, like, the back catalog of stuff that I already have. Um, yeah, thanks guys for watching, appreciate subscribing, uh, give this video a like if you, if you watched all the way through and actually found it interesting and entertaining, give it a thumbs down if you hated every second of it. So, uh, I'm going to bed now, you guys have a good day, see you later.